Well, hello and welcome to Physics Games. I'm just out and about on our community server doing a bit of farming right now. And uh, I'm going to make a video today to answer the question that I get the most um, online in Discord in my comments, and that is people having trouble accessing the place to put all of your custom maps. Maybe the custom maps that they download from me or someone else. Maybe they uh, want to know where their save game is when they've been on a server. All of these kind of things. But anyway, people keep asking me, so I've just made a nice silly video. A basic video on how to find the percentage app data percentage folder uh, what all the different folders mean what they do so anyway if it's for you great and uh, i hope it is useful uh, but i'll see you on the other side so welcome to my windows 10 virtual machine a completely clean install of windows 10 so i can show you how to find the percentage app data folder and also show you um, all the different folders that are there and, and ways to get easy access. So let's get stuck in. First, we're going to open Windows Explorer. And uh, we're usually presented with the quick access menu. And then we can also see this PC. We can see all our drives and our folders, our standard Windows folders. We're going to go into the local C drive. And this is, this is what you might see. You might see a lot more than this. But this is just, a, as I say, a clean install. And here are the users that use this PC. So I'm going to double click on this. And in here, we can see that there is a public folder and then a folder for every single user that can log on to your computer. Now, normally, I would say that you'd probably normally see things in the uh, in this kind of format, but I've just made it a little bit bigger. I'm viewing extra large icons today just to kind of help on screen. And uh, the user that logs on to this virtual machine, well, I've called them physics games, of course, and we're going to go into here. And this is the normal stuff that we see. We've got everything, I don't know, 3D objects I've never used in my life, the documents, the downloads, and all of this kind of stuff. But we can't see the percentage app data percentage folder in here because it's hidden so we need to click on to view and then this little button here shows hidden items and immediately it kind of all shifts about and we can see a couple of little things some kind of user dat file but this one importantly which is the percentage app data and it's slightly faded out there um because of course it is a hidden object but we're going to go into there and you will see that there is a local local low and roaming folder the roaming folder we wish to go into and then you should see or you probably will see many 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 more things than this by default we have the adobe and the microsoft folders and once you get seven days to die installed you'll have the seven days to die one here the first one and the third one the easy anti-cheat known as eac now we go into the seven days to die folder and again this is what you see if you basically install the game and then you all you've done is run it and exit so i'm going to show you different levels because as we run a game or we go onto a public server more and more folders are going to appear and then if we want to install modlets in the future we're going to actually have to create our own folder here as well but the important ones are the ones with capital letters so this one here saves we'll go into here and it's uh, just got a little bit of information in there but nothing so far this is where we're going to get our save games but we're going to have to generate some worlds we're going to have to go into public servers, install mods, and of course, the whole point of this video, um, the number one priority here, is how do we end up putting in a custom map. So we found it, but there is an easier way. If we close that down and we go over to the bottom left of your windows, you can see the start button and you can also see the search bar. Now we could use the search bar, but the easiest way in every versions of window, however you've got it set up, is to simply left click once on the actual little icon, the windows icon, and then we're gonna start typing percentage A, P, P, D, A, T, A, and then percentage. And if we do that, up comes the uh, the file folder and all i do is hit the enter key and boom we're at exactly the same place that we navigated to even if we didn't set the view to see hidden folders we can also make life a lot easier for ourselves in the future by going over to the seven days to die folder and right clicking on it and clicking on pin to quick access now what that means you can see it's just appeared here over on the left that whenever i open windows explorer from now on and the quick access appears i see the desktop the downloads the documents the pictures and also i see the seven days to die roaming folder which means if i just click straight on that i am at the place that i want to be every single time 
and I can access the save games, modlets, and of course, all these maps that I wish to upload. So here on my virtual machine, I've installed Steam. The only game I've got on there is Seven Days to Die. And uh, yep, I've played a little bit more than 9.3 hours, but this is my other account that I use if I'm making a video and I need another person standing in the background. So I've only used it a little bit. Let's hit play and uh, we're going to boot up this game. We're going to see what happens when we run a game for the first time. How does that change the directory structures? So this was our roaming directory for seven days to die. And we've only really got the saves folder there and that's got nothing in it. We're now in at Seven Days to Die and we're going to start a new game for the very first time. I'm going to create a character and uh, then we're just going to start Nabba's game and we'll see what happens. Look, it is the first time I've ever played it. So I better uh, give it the access it needs to play the game and uh, we'll see what changes. So I started a new game and it was in Nabba's game and I didn't change the game name I just uh, kept it as the default which is my game which means that I can continue that game and there it is we're currently in alpha 20.7 this is all going to work for alpha 21 and for the foreseeable future and there it is Nabba's game my game so what has that done to our directory structures now here we are nothing's changed visibly in the, uh, the standard seven days to die roaming folder in the percentage app data percentage folder so let's have a look in the saves there it is now we have Navas game and in there my game and here is all the details now this is the folder that when you are playing you can right click and you can copy this and save that somewhere else but this game my game must be placed in the Navas game and Navas game also points to the actual saved world so this is not the place where we put our custom maps this is just the save information that's associated with them so the more challenging thing is where are these worlds saved we cannot see the actual information for the actual world here because it's saved elsewhere but first we're going to go back to seven days to die and we are going to try a new game but this time we're going to generate our own world and when we do we're going to have to be uh, careful of its naming so in this case we have my game that doesn't really matter at the moment we're going to get a new generated world we'll make something nice and small and quick let's say a 6k one and importantly um, this generated world name is what we need to look for and this is uh, Juvoop Valley so we've got to remember that and it's worth writing this down we're going to hit start and we're going to generate this and then we're going to be able to see the files that are created in those directories so we're part way through the generation at the moment let's go back to our folder here our percentage app data roaming folders and uh yeah we have saves with a capital s that's the important one with our save games in it but now we have this new one generated worlds um and this one has been created in this process and it will stay there forever it's just you need to do this for the first time and there is a javoop valley the one that we're making right now in there well it's so far made the biomes file, a radiation file, something called a splat for. More of these will appear. There'll be several of these that you require to run a map. But this is where our generated world files are. And if we wanted to put our own custom map in the game as well, then what we would do is we would end up making a new folder here and we can give it any name we want. So if we give this one custom map one, um, and then we leave that there. It means that if we put some files in here that look a lot like the files that are in here, and as I say, there will be many of those in a moment when I finish generating, then you will be able to access them in the game. Once you start a game, if I start a game in Javoop Valley, then what it will do is in the saves, it will make a there it is, the Javoop Valley. It's got it ready. Now, I haven't accessed the game, or it's going to access the game. By default, I called it, left it as my game again. And it's going to end up putting tons of files in here. So within, if I do not give myself good names of games, then in Nave's game, I've got a my game. And in Javoop Valley, I've got a my game as well. So it's worth changing this and giving yourself some good names so you can separate all these different folders if you need to you know take backups later on in the future so there we are we have been in the game we've generated them i'm looking at javoop valley these are all the files eventually that are produced 
and the files that are produced once you first go in the game. So you might not see all of these, this Splat 4 process, this Splat 3 process, and a couple of the others will only appear once you've actually entered the game. If you download a custom map, you shouldn't really see those extra files, but we'll compare them a bit later because we made um, a custom map folder and we want to put something in here. And later on, we'll come back to this and we'll fill this up with these files that will allow you to enter the game and see a, a world you've downloaded, say from Nexus Mods or from, say, my Discord. So let's search for Nexus Mods Seven Days to Die so I can get a custom map. We'll nip over to the the community over here and if I search for mega city map then we will find the some of the uploads that I've put in there and we're going to quickly download one of these files so I've been over to Nexus mods and I have quickly downloaded um, a file which has the 4k map that I want to use today and we're going to right click on this zip file and we're going to extract all and then hit extract and this is going to produce all the files that you'll need there they are within the zip file that you'll need in order to make this game now we've got to be super careful with this one because depending on the program you use it depends on how the folder structure appears now if you download any of my mods then when you open the folder you'll simply see everything that you need often these are found in another folder beneath it and we always want to get the folder structure right we always want to get these files in our own folder so if you're using my downloads then you can just right click and you can cut this and this or copy this and you will end up being able to bring that over directly to your folder settings if there is if these files are in another folder then you have to move that folder itself so basically you don't want any subfolders in any of the things that you move over to your percentage out data uh, area. So let's do it this way. This is the way I prefer to do it because I know it's going to work every time is I highlight all the files. Now notice there isn't the splat three processed, the splat four processed. If they're there, it's okay. It's just, it's an excessively large file and it means the person that's produced the zip folder full of these has accessed the game before they sent it to you. So this is the the proper way of doing it so if we right click on this and hit copy then what we're going to do is go back to our quick access and however you want to get there get to that percentage app data or roaming seven days to die folder so we can go into our generated worlds and we already made this little custom map one folder and i can go into here and i can then paste these files in here and there they all are the lovely lovely files now maybe i don't want it as custom map maybe i want to call it which this is a 4k mega city so now we have our folder there let's go back into the game we're going to hit new game and as we go through everything we're going to eventually find the 4k mega city map if it doesn't come up straight away just exit seven days and then reload it this time we're going to give it a proper game name so let's call this my 4k mega city just so we know it's different this is my 4k mega city and then we're going to hit start so we've been in the game and then come back out there's javupi valley from earlier there's the 4K Mega City, which we placed in Generated Worlds. But if we go to the saves now, we'll now see the 4K Mega City. And in here, we should see a folder, and that should say My 4K Mega City. So now we know that this is the save game that goes with the, the map itself. Now, within the saves game, we have Navis game. And within the generated worlds, we don't have Navas game. And this is a bit of a legacy thing um, that may change in the future. But this is something um, that is to do with the game save files or the world save files that are not generated. They come with the actual game itself. So let me show you where they are. If I click on our C drive and I go to my program files, the x86 ones, and then we go down here, we should be able to find, there it is, there's our Steam directory. Within our Steam directory, there should be a lovely Steam apps. There's the Steam apps. And within here, we should get common. If we keep going through, we get to see Seven Days to Die. And there might be many others here for other games that you've installed. And then within here, we have lots of Seven Days to Die information, including a data directory. And in there, we have Worlds. And in there, we can see the Navis game, the Pregen 6K, 
8K and 10K that came, come with the game. Now those, you just leave there, they just sit there all the time. But if you make a save game for those, they will also appear in the save game all the way back over in the percentage app data. So here's the save games and there is the numbers game one that we had earlier. So here I am at 7 days to die mods.com. Just going to download a the classic lockable inventory slot modlet. And once we've downloaded it, we're going to end up with a zip file here. We can see the ones from our maps earlier. I will remove them so they're out the way. And there's the, uh, the, the little folder that we've got. So I'm going to right click on this and we're going to extract everything there. And instead of, well, instead of seeing the files like you did on my map download, you're going to end up seeing a folder. And within that folder, there is another folder and some information. Now, this is where the confusion can take place because now we have folder under a folder under a folder. The important thing is, is to understand that the zip file, especially if you extract with the standard Windows zipping system, you might use a different one like 7-zip and it may do it differently depending on the option you click. But most of the time you'll end up extracting the folder into a folder that has the same name. Now, within that, it has a folder of the same name. And within that, it has this config folder and mod info. These are actually, this is actually the mods. This is the mod itself. And we need to go back only one folder. And that's the one that we want. So I'm going to right click on this and copy this. And then we're going to go to our seven days to die, a little percentage app data deals. Now, this time, where do we put it? Well, we're going to have to make our own folder. This is the only time you're ever going to have to make your own folder within here. It's not there by default. And with a capital M, I'm going to type in mods. And within that mods folder, I'm going to paste a folder. So the mods folder requires a named folder and you can call it anything you want. So we could just call it lockable or just slots or something like that, but we'll leave it be. And within this folder, so mods, then the folder we have all the mod info now sometimes they come with a folder sometimes they don't but the main thing is is you don't have any extra folders any directories further on than that now in order to get this to work we definitely need to exit seven days to die and we need to run it again and then we will see that appear there are other folders that will appear um, as you go through if you run a quick game online and i'll do that now there we go, Saves Local has now appeared. So I've been into an online server. In fact, I went onto my community server. If you want to know more about that, just hit us up at the Discord. And a Saves Local folder has now appeared again with a capital letter. We go in there and there's all the information that, that appears due to me accessing an online server for the game. Then if you've done any editing with the level prefab editor, the local prefab folder will appear. And within there, there'll be anything that you've saved and any parts that you saved. And finally, a screenshots directory can also appear if you have taken a screenshot using Seven Days to Die rather than Steam actually grabbing that for you. And they are all the folders within the percentage app data roaming Seven Days to Die folders. Well, the grind is real here on the community server trying to feed everyone with our giant farm here but thank you everyone for watching today i hope it's been useful to you um to uh, find out how that percentage app data percentage folder works and of course if you've got any more questions you can drop them in the comments below and it's lovely if you do hit a comment anyway even just to say thanks or hi or anything and hit the like button because truly even though everyone always asks you to do it it does actually make a huge difference to the amount of people that get to see the video. Um, of course, there is the Discord server, which I am going to put links to below in the description, uh, because that's the place where you'll be able to actually have a chat with me and all the lovely other people that are in the community uh, that want to help you uh, get the best out of seven days to die. There'll be other videos appearing on screen, if not now or in a moment. Uh, so why not watch something else as well? That'd be brilliant. And of course, thank you to everyone who is a member of this channel because your little um, funding absolutely makes this happen. Well, in fact, it makes this happen out here, this beautiful server and uh, all the lovely gaming and fun that we can have together. Looking forward to Alpha 21. All the instructions you've heard today here will also work on that. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.